Hello everyone, welcome to my Ancient Rome Get Ready With Me. Disclaimer, I am not a verified historian. This is just based off of some research that I was able to do. So to start with, I am wearing my first layer, my tunica. Um, I don't have any Roman undergarments at this time. And also I wasn't going to uh, wear that for you on here. So for now, we're just starting with the tunica. It's just two rectangles. If you haven't seen the video on how I made that, I will link it somewhere around here. It's just two rectangles sewn together and pinned together at the top. And now I'm putting on my stola, which is based off of the color of Tyrian purple. It's also just two rectangles sewn together and then pinned at the top to make a sort of like sleeveless dress pattern. The fit is loose. Now I'll be putting on a belt, which I wove from a variation on the work Sherlock Lewins did for one of the Osberg ship burial patterns. I just tied it in a simple knot here and I'm only doing the one belt look for today. Then I just pulled the fabric out so it looked a little more appealing. And the last clothing layer is the pala, which is just a very long rectangle of fabric that you can drape around yourself in a number of ways. And now I'm moving on to doing my makeup. I am not using authentic Roman materials because a lot of the powders that they used for their face were actually toxic and I don't want to become ill so I'm not going to use those. I'm just using what's basically a loose setting powder that is a very pale shade. Mm. I am very pale so it's hard to get much paler of a shade than my skin tone after being in quarantine for eight months. First, I'm starting off by moisturizing my skin with some olive oil. I did read that they used to put olive oil on their skin and uh, it's something I've done personally also in the past. I think this will help to both moisturize the skin and help give the loose powder something to stick to uh, because I feel like it would just fall off of dry skin. And now I'm just using my big brush to put on this powder. I don't have anything really appropriate uh, or accurate and I don't want to buy an animal bristle brush so I'm just using this one and just covering my whole face to give myself that nice ghostly glow. I'll tell you, this three-way candlelight mirror is very handy and an awesome find that my husband made at a local thrift shop. The same one where I get a lot of my fabrics. Now, I'm using a blush that is just a regular blush 
Though I did read that if they were going to use something like a blush, they would use a variety of like crushed up flower petals, maybe roses. Um, I think I put too much accidentally, but it was hard to control with my fingers. But this adds a little bit of youthful color back into my now ghostly complexion. Also, I have to say the loose powder did not do a very good job of coverage. And now I'm putting on eyeliner that I made from just charcoal and water, which I think is actually pretty accurate. They just used lots of burnt stuff that turned into black ash to make their eyeliner. And um, yeah, it wasn't as easy to control as modern eyeliners. I put it on the top and the bottom of my eyes. It's a, it seemed to replicate what I had seen in various artworks from the time period. Now I just put a little of the olive oil in with the um, blush to make a sort of lip color, which I had seen conflicting sources on this as to whether they did or didn't use any lip color, but it's very faint. You almost can't see it. And now I'm putting on some jewelry. I read that bracelets with snakes on them were really popular during the ancient Roman period, which was very convenient because I have one of my grandmother's old bracelets, which is two snakes meeting in the middle. And then I put on that other bracelet, which really matched a lot of different styles and was similar to things I've seen. Um, I think that bracelet might have come from the Middle East, which uh, I used to live there when I was small. So we have a lot of jewelry that came from there. In today's look, I tried to model my hair off of a coin that I saw that was printed of Calpurnia, who was Julius Caesar's last wife. I didn't have any Roman accurate hairpins, so I'm just using my regular hairpins. Although they also used to sew their hair into place, um, which is really hard to do on yourself and I couldn't manage to do it. so. I am pinning, but I hope you'll understand the, what the final look would look like. What's nice about hair that's this curly is that it actually just wants to stick to itself. And I'm just using this leather strip that I had cut as a tie for my hair uh, because I thought it helped me to achieve the final look I saw on the coin.
And here is the final look. Here is our elegant Roman lady. Uh, this is just one way to do the costume. There's a lot of variations. If I was going to use this costume more permanently, I probably would have added some woven trims to the top, but it was mostly just for the experimentation of how the pattern came together. And if you've seen my Pala video, you'll know that you can style it a number of different ways, depending on your mood or where you're going. Thank you for watching and I will link the other videos on how to make these items down below and also at the end of this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to continue with me on my journey through history and give it a like. And thank you always for watching and making me really excited to share videos with you all. If you make your own ancient Rome costume, tag me on Instagram at gabrielle.westwood and I really want to see what you all are making and experimenting with since we've been cooped up for so long. I think we're all yearning to go on a little journey, even if it's just in our homes. See you next time.